Good afternoon, everybody. Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And it is the 20th of November, 2021. And time is flying. It's uh, Thanksgiving's right around the corner, and Christmas is just on the other side, and we'll be wrapping up the year. So time is flying here in the pandemic. Hope everybody's doing well out there. What do we got on the cards today for the Linux Unix Tech Channel? Well, I thought I would take a look at a, uh, an operating system. It's called Ghost BSD, based on uh, FreeBSD, uh, and it uh, BSD stands for Berkeley Software Distribution. It is a distribution of uh, Berkeley Unix, uh, and unlike Linux, it is not a distribution. It's not a distro, so it's not based on the Linux kernel. It has its own kernel, and it is Berkeley Unix. So. We'll take a look at that. The last time I looked at uh, GhostBSD, I did a review. You might want to go back through my videos, or I'll might place a link there so you can grab, go and grab it if you're interested to take a look. I did a review of GhostBSD uh, version 19. I believe that was in uh, late 2018, early 2019. So um, right now, GhostBSD is in version 21.10.16. And that's the version we're going to look at today in review. I'm out on uh, distrowatch.com right now, and here's the information that it's showing for GhostBSD. Um, this uh, website, by the way, was last updated on November the, or October rather, the 17th of 2021. So it's fairly recent uh, and well maintained. It is uh, BSD, as I mentioned, it's based on FreeBSD. Uh, its origin is in Canada, and its architecture is an x86-64. Uh, it comes with the MATE and the XFCE desktops. Um, I've elected to look at the MATE desktop here today in this review. And uh, its category is desktop and live medium. Uh, I've already installed it here in VirtualBox version 6, which is my favorite hypervisor. And I've got it installed on bare metal too, by the way, and it's actually my daily driver right now on my Aspire, uh, Acer Aspire laptop. Uh, I use it every day, been using it for a little over a week, and it is one working wonderfully. Uh, it is, as I said, my daily driver. So um, it is an active uh, operating system, obviously. Its popularity is 49 right now on DistroWatch. So let me read this blurb real quick. It says, GhostBSD is a user-friendly desktop operating system based on FreeBSD. Its default desktop is MATE, but a separate community edition with XFCE is available too. It's also, it also features an OpenRC init system, a selection of commonly used software, a rolling release development model, and a bootable live image with an intuitive graphical system installer. So as I mentioned, I've already installed it using that graphical installer. Uh, and uh, booted up for the first time. Uh, and so I will take a look at it. Uh, right now, the home page, according to Ghost uh, BSD on DistroWatch, is www.ghostbsd.org. And we'll go out there right now. So let's go out to the desktop or to the website. And here's ghostbsd.org. Uh, has the simple, elegant desktop BSD operating system showing up prominently on the home page. says that it's simple, it's elegant, it is BSD. Here's the latest news um, involving uh, GhostBSD. GhostBSD is available in the ISO now for um, MATE and XFCE. The MATE version is 1.26.0. And uh, I grabbed the uh, download here. Let's see if there's anything down below. Um, below here I don't see anything else so let's come back up and the download link is here and uh, what I did was I did the direct download 64-bit AMD 64 which is the official uh, image for ghost PSD 2110 16 minimum system requirements here um, it's, it's in a v VM right now in virtual box but like I said I, I do have it installed on bare metal Minimum system requirements of 64-bit processor, 4 gigs of RAM, 15 gigs of free hard drive space, and a network card. All right. So I just clicked on the link and downloaded it, 
Um, I cannot recall the size of the image, but I think it was around 2.1 gigabytes in size. Here's other information about GhostBSD. Here's an about page. Here's the GhostBSD project. A lot of information there that's helpful. Here's some news regarding uh, GhostBSD latest release. Here's some events related to GhostBSD on the calendar. You might want to take a look at that. Here's the community link. It's uh, community supported, obviously. This is the PHPBB bulletin board for GhostBSD. You might want to take a look at that as well. Um, there's the download link that I showed you. Here's the wiki. They have a wiki associated with it as well. All right, so you can take a look at that. And uh, for support, you can uh, find a bugs and feature requests to Telegram and forums. You can contribute to the project here by clicking on the contribute link and they'll be happy to accept your donation. Um, there's a store here for the uh, GhostBSD uh, itself. You can, it appears, get uh, GhostBSD uh, in a download, not a download, but a uh, medium uh, to install if you don't want to download. And it looks like $2.57 on their website. And then here's the donation link for donate donors, sponsors, partners, and patrons. Okay, so let's go on out to uh, GhostBSD, take a look at it. Here is um, my uh, favorite uh, hypervisor, um, VirtualBox version 6. And I've got B GhostBSD installed. Let's take a look at the settings that I have for it right now. War system, I've got it set up with uh, 4096 megabytes of uh, base memory. Uh, I've got uh, for display the full 128 gigabytes or megabytes rather of video memory. I've got it set for VVox VGA. For storage, um, I'm using the GhostBSD 21.10.16 image, ISO file. Um, Audio didn't need to do anything with that. Uh, it's using the, the standard ICHAC97 on my system. For network, I did change that to uh, bridge adapter and uh, using a, a uh, wired connection here uh, on my Farron OS system. And that's about it. So let's go ahead and click uh, cancel here. And uh, I've already got it started, so let me go back out and uh, bring it up. And um, here we go. So we're at the uh, login screen. Uh, I've had it shut down. So let me go ahead and put in my password and get in. And here it is. All right. So this is GhostBSD version 21.10.16 Berkeley Unix. Let's take a look at what we have. Uh, first thing I want to show you is this down here, which is the Plank dock. And, uh, and the Plank dock is something that it's kind of like if you're a Mac user, it's down at the bottom where you can grab things. Uh, it's like a docky as well, if you're familiar with docky. I've got Evolution Mail. I've got Mate System Monitor, Mate Terminal, Kaja File Manager, uh, HTOP installed. I had to install that, and then uh, it did not come out of the box. And then I've got Firefox Web Browser. So let's take a look at the Mate uh, System Monitor. And so here's the system monitor, and uh, so you can monitor the system very easily with this, and it's coming on the graphical now. It's coming across the across the screen for network history, for memory and swap history, and for CPU history as well. You can go and uh, click on system, and it'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, it is uh, based on FreeBSD. Its release is 3.0 stable. It's using the FreeBSD kernel. 13.0 uh, stable generic AMD 64 for the 64-bit processor and it's using the MATE 1.26.0 uh, desktop environment. Its uh, memory of allocated to it is the 4 gigs of course that I mentioned. Uh, it's using uh, Intel Core i3-7100 CPU which is on my main system since this is a virtual machine uh, and then the uh, standard video graphics with the uh, VirtualBox all right, for processes, here's your processes that are running, and uh, HTOP will show that as well. We'll show that in a moment. Resources here, again, at the screen we've already seen, and then file systems. Here's the file systems uh, 
that are currently installed and it uses ZFS which is a Zetabate, uh, Zetabyte file system uh, in Ghost BSD. Uh, you can get that in Linux but you usually have to uh, install that on Linux or find a distro that has it uh, out of the box. But with GhostBSD, it already comes installed and ready to use. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's come across here to uh, Evolution Mail. You've probably seen that, so I'm not going to launch that. The Mate Terminal, here is the terminal. And uh, so let me do a uname A and show you that we are running FreeBSD uh, with the 13.0 stable kernel and uh, AMD64. All right, and if I do a DFKH here, you can see that uh, right now I am using uh, 30 gigs of uh, 30 gigs available. I'm using 38 gigs, 21 percent capacity right now on uh, GhostBSD. All right, so let's uh, let me go ahead and clear the screen, clear and clean up a terminal, and uh, exit out of the terminal. So let me come over to uh, Kaja, and this is the file manager. And the file manager is uh, it's a very nice file manager. I like it. Um, you've got your usual players. I've got uh, music, pictures, public documents, downloads, uh, and videos, etc. And you've got the computer here on the left showing you all of those uh, directories as well. Now we've got a browse network. I've got a couple of... Uh, SMB CIFS shares out there on uh, Open Media Vault. So if I click on that, here they are. And uh, so if I come to and double click on that for the Raspberry Pi, uh, I've got the Acer store, I've got the Linux store, I've got the uh, data drive, the rsync drive in Store Vault 3. If I click on Linux store, uh, it requires me to log in. Let me go ahead and do that. And here we go. So I've got all my stuff out here on Open Media Vault, my network uh, attached storage using Open Media Vault 6. And uh, it's really nice. I'm able to touch it here from GhostBSD running in this virtual machine. And I'm, I'm able to do that, by the way, with my laptop. So this is very nice to have available with uh, things that you can grab and storage that's available on your network. All right, so let's go ahead and close the uh, file manager. Let's go out to HTOP and launch that, and here we go. And so with HTOP, you can see right now we've got 725 megabytes of 4 gigs being utilized. It's been running for 22 minutes, so uh, that's not bad uh, for a Mate desktop. I, I think that's really a great thing. Uh, CPU uh, usage is up here, swap down here. Uh, I'd have 2.5 gigs available, but I'm not using anything. I've got 96 tasks right now, zero threads, one task running. Load averages are 0 0.12, 0 0.38, and 0.42 for one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes in this system. Uh, and the uptime, of course, is 23 minutes and 10 seconds. Here are all the processes that are currently running in the system right now. And so HTOP does need to be installed. And uh, I will need to tell you that... Um, that the uh, package manager for GhostBSD is not the same as uh, the typical package managers for like Aptitude or DNF or even Pac-Man. It is PKG. And uh, to update the system, you'll need to run a uh, sudo PKG update. You cannot run sudo PKG upgrade. It will not recognize that command. The update command is all you need. So it's sudo PKG update. Uh, to install uh, HTOP, let me go ahead and close out of this. Let me open up the terminal. And to install the uh, terminal, oh, that's not the terminal. There's the terminal. To, in to install uh, HTOP, let me go ahead and make sure it's uh, up and running. It is. So I'll have sudo uh, pkg htop install. Sorry. Uh, htop. It should say it's already installed. Put in my pseudo password. Okay, it says that GhostBSD is up to date. All repositories are up to date. Most recent version of the package is already installed. So GhostBSD is already installed. Now, if you needed to find it and it, you didn't know it was installed or not, 
you could run sudo uh, pkg uh, search htop and of course it would uh, tell you that uh, htop uh, right here is version 3.0.5 interactive process viewer okay already already installed on the system all right so let's go ahead and exit out all right let's come up and take a look what we have here and so if I click on the installed applications you can see we have for accessories we have character map in Grama package archive manager we've got Mate calculator Mate font viewer Mate search tool passwords and keys plank uh, pluma uh, root terminal and take screenshot for collection we've got Kaja and Mate terminal for graphics we have the eye of mate image viewer the uh, Mate color selection and shot well which is a, a graphics program uh, for photos for internet we have Firefox web browser let's go ahead and click on that I forgot to click on it down here on the on the dock and so it should bring up the uh, here we go and so here we have uh, let's set that as a default browser and so Firefox is installed and uh, it's installed by the way out of the box so let me come down to help and uh, let's see help and about Firefox and so right now uh, it is Firefox 93.0 64-bit uh, so that's a fairly recent version of Firefox and uh, it seems to be working uh, really well so if I click on um, Data Pioneer the web my website and bring that up this is uh, the uh, most important website in the world right here it's just datapioneer.org net-network.org and here we go go um, yep seems to be running well and let me just pull that up here I was gonna scroll it but I can't here we go and so uh, yeah it looks like it's it came up really well let's go out to the blog and take a look at the blog itself make sure you can go there um, in a virtual machine it seems to be a little slower uh, but uh, on bare metal it just flies all right so here we go here's my blog and uh, there's I just did an article on htop by the way if you want to go out and check it out that is secure site https colon backslash backslash data pioneer dash network dot org I'll put a link to that in the show notes down below the video so let me go ahead and close out of the uh, browser now let's come back and we are at office uh, Libre office is available but it's not installed out of the box so we've got the atrial document viewer Calibre or caliber I think is what most people how they pronounce it I had to install that I've got my caliber library I've got like 400 and 30 books up there in that library. Ebook editor, ebook viewer. I've got Evolution Mail. I have not installed it on here, although I am using it on my uh, Acer Aspire laptop. LRF viewer and the Mate dictionary. For programming, we've got the uh, QGET. For uh, sound and video, we've got Rhythmbox, sound, and VLC media player, which came installed out of the box as well. System tools. Kaja and uh, Decomp Editor, Fish, HTOP, which I had to install, Log File Viewer, Mate Disk Usage Analyzer, Mate System Monitor, Terminal, and Power Statistics. All right. For applications, um, you've got accessories, ca collections, uh, graphics, uh, internet, office, programming, sound and video, and system tools. And then for places, you've got the home folder, the desktop, the computer, the network, uh, and then here's one of my network attached storage uh, shares. Connect to server, uh, Mate search tool, which is nice. So for instance, I want to click on that. I want to search for Plank, which is the application running down here. I can search for it in the file system here. And let's do, let's find it. And there we go it's locating plank installed in the system wherever that may be and uh, in fact one of the things I wanted to show you here is um, I had to here's plank which is located the folder itself is located at user local bin okay 
So what I had to do was I had to come over to uh, System through the Control Center and come down to the Startup Applications and I had to actually install this here as a startup program because uh, out of the box for some reason um, the developers of GhostBSD did not have Plank automatically starting up. So I went in and, and created this by clicking the Add button here. Let's do an edit on it. You can see I just put in the name Plank and then I put the command forward slash user forward slash local forward slash bin forward slash Plank. And then I gave a comment of doc for GhostBSD. Click Save. And uh, there it is. And then when I restarted, it uh, automatically came up Okay, uh, on the restart. It'll do that if you hibernate it or suspend it or shut it down. Okay, so uh, let's look at systems. We've got preferences, hardware, displays, keyboard, uh, keyboard shortcuts, mouse, power management, time and date manager, uh, internet and network. We've got network proxy look and feel. We've got appearance and right now I've got uh, custom uh, theme set up here. For background I'm using uh, the background uh, which is what you see here which is right here. Here are some of the others that are available. This one's the one that comes stock uh, out of the box uh, on the out of the box experience for Ghost BSD 211016. But I, I kind of like this one, so I switched it. All right, let's close that. Um, and then for uh, personal, you've got an about me, assistive technologies, file management, preferred applications. And the preferred applications for web browsers for me is Firefox right now. Mail reader is Evolution Mail, Instant Messenger for instant messaging, for multimedia. I have made the image viewer is the image viewer out of the box. Rhythm box music player is the out of the box music player for multimedia. Video player out of the box is VLC media player for system. Pluma, which is a text editor. Uh, comes stock out of the box. Uh, terminal emulator is the Mate Terminal. File Manager, of course, is Kaja Calculator is the Mate Calculator. For Office, uh, the HRUL Document Viewer is the one that comes out of the box. There is no uh, word processor or spreadsheet uh, editor because we don't have LibreOffice installed yet. All right, and so uh, let's go back to System. Let's look at Control Center, and this is where I'll uh, talk about uh, how to install packages. Um, for administration, you got to print settings, and I believe this found my printer. Uh, nope, did not find my printer, so I haven't set the printer up yet. And this is a virtual box, uh, virtual machine, so it may not find the printer right away, but in my um, bare metal install on my laptop, my Acer laptop, it did find the printer. For software station, if you click that, this is where you can install software. So let me go ahead and put in my password. And uh, when it comes up, you can see that you can install uh, packages. It's syncing right now with available packages. So uh, we have to give it a moment to uh, take a look at that. All right, so here's uh, the availability over here. And for instance, for uh, so your editors, your DNS, your emulators, financial software, uh, FTP games, uh, graphics, for graphics, uh, let's take a look at that. Um, I want to type in Krita, see if Krita is available. And it is, so I can just put a check mark here in this box and come out and apply that. All right, and it'll come up and say what it's going to be installing. I will go ahead and confirm that installation. And uh, it should be um, installing that, and it is. And so it says all the repositories are up to date. It's fetching all the required packages and installing those. And then when it gets completed, we should have uh, Krita available to launch. So we'll, uh, we'll let that complete. It shouldn't take very long. And if it does, I'll stop the video and come back when it's finished. But we're at 46 of 75 packages right now, so I'll just let it go on through. And... Um, Take a look at that, and then I'll show you uh, LibreOffice. We won't install that, but I'll show you that it is available. All right, so it's uh, fetched everything, and it is uh, installing it now. And uh, it does look like this may take a while, so I think I will pause the video and come back when it's completed.
Okay, I'm back, and it did take about three minutes to install this package, and so the Krita is installed. And before we go out to look at Krita, um, let me go ahead and, and check out uh, LibreOffice. So I'll just type in Libre, uh, and there's uh, LibreOffice here. So let's look at U.S. versions of LibreOffice. And uh, so I'll come down to... Uh, the actual LibreOffice itself. There it is. You can just put a check mark right there for LibreOffice and click apply and it will install LibreOffice for you as well. So let's go ahead and let's close this out and I'll close it out right now. I'll come back to it here in a moment. But if we come up to applications and then go to graphics, uh, Krita is now available. And uh, so it should launch here momentarily. 4.4.8 is the version pretty recent version of Krita and there it is and so we can bring that up to the full screen and there we go All right, uh, this Berkeley uh, software distribution uh, Berkeley Unix is very responsive I, I, have, to, I have to say very responsive uh, as responsive as any Linux distro I've used recently alright so let's go ahead and close this so let's come back up to system control center and get back in here so here's the software station now let's look at the update station this is how you can update your software uh, in uh, uh, BSD ghost BSD it says that no updates are available so you can close that you can do it that way or you can go out to the terminal of course and you can type in sudo pkg update and then put in your password for sudo and it just says it's up to date as well. Now one of the things I will mention about your sudo password or being prompted for it is unlike Linux where if you put in your sudo password uh, and then you need to use uh, elevated privileges again within 15 minutes you won't need to enter it but in GhostBSD you do need to enter it every time. Alright so let me do it. go ahead and click exit and get out of this come back we've got hardware displays keyboard keyboard shortcuts mouse power management time and date manager uh, network proxy look and feel appearance main menu pop-up notifications screensaver uh, station tweak and windows and then personal you've got about me assistive technologies file management preferred applications and startup applications all here okay and then you've got other things running down here we've already touched on most of these if not all of them so I'm not going to go over that again alright let's go back up to system got a help functionality here so you can click on help and get help with the operating system I am running a dark theme here so uh, it's easier on my eyes I like it that way uh, so you've got things over here that you can take advantage of for GhostBSD if you're not familiar with it uh, especially if you're a first time user of GhostBSD you may want to take advantage of the help function you've got about mate you've got lock screens you can lock the screen if you're going to walk away from it um, you can log out uh, as your user or you can shut down here restart cancel or, or shut down I'm going to go ahead and cancel alright got uh, icons out on the desktop and of course in trash across the top now uh, here I've got in the middle I've put a widget out here which is my weather widget and uh, I got that by just let me go ahead and close it. Uh, all I did was right click and select um, add to panel and then I just put in weather weather report okay just clicked it and added it to so I just do an add here uh, which added it out on the desktop and then I put it up on the panel and then I uh, configured it for my particular area which is Asheville North Carolina there we go and so this tells me the updated weather. It's a really nice weather app. Um, gives a lot of information here. Very concise information. Very detailed information, which I like. And then a forecast, which gives a, a, about a seven-day forecast, I believe. Tonight, Sunday, Sunday night, Monday, Monday night, Tuesday, Tuesday night, all the way up through next Saturday, which is very nice. All right, let's close that. Over here, I put another widget in, which is the workspace widget. And I did that by uh, right-clicking and adding to panel. And I typed in workspace. 
and workspace switcher and added that and I added it here okay so you've got one two three four uh, workstations if you right click you can change preferences and add more workstations if you like you can even make more than one row if you want to do that as well but I've only got the four of them I like to have six out here so I've got six going now and come on across I've got uh, yeah, this is my audio, okay, and then I've got uh, the calendar, all right, 20th of uh, November, all right, so it's the standard standard things here uh, yeah, that you see normally in Linux. Okay, so this has been a kind of a quick look at the Ghost BSD 21.10.16. It's a Berkeley software distribution, Berkeley Unix operating system, uh, available through ghostbsd.org. I highly recommend you take a look at it and uh, take it out for a spin. I think you'll like it. Uh, as I mentioned, I am using it as my daily driver right now on my laptop, and it loves it, and I do too. So uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up down below. It helps my uh, channel grow, and if you haven't subscribed to me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell and uh, take your selection there of which way you would like to have personalization or all of my videos and every time I upload a video you'll be able to uh, see that video uh, immediately. Alright so this has been Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Hope you have a great day. Take care out there. Goodbye.